Number 21. A 90 kilogram skydiver hanging from a parachute bounces up and down with a period of 1.5 seconds. What is the new period of oscillation when a second skydiver whose mass is 60 kilograms hangs from the legs of the first, as seen in figure whatever? So, let's just take this one piece at a time. The first sentence. They tell us the mass of the skydiver, so we know the mass. That's going to be 90 kilograms. And we also know that they're bouncing up and down. That sounds like simple harmonic motion. And the period of such a bounce will be 1.5 seconds. Okay, so 1.5 seconds. What can we find out by knowing the mass and knowing the period and knowing that this is simple harmonic motion? What can we find out with these two pieces of information? Well, we have a formula over here on the right-hand side right, that relates the period and the mass, and another unknown, the spring constant, right? So it's basically, if I write this out, that the period is equal to two pi times the square root of the mass that is oscillating divided by the spring constant. If I know the period and I know the mass, I can solve for k. That's the only unknown. So why don't we do that? Let's just do it, all right? Can't hurt, it's more information. Maybe that'll illuminate then the next step. Instead of doing this as like a whole bunch of substitutions and equation, I'm choosing to solve this a different way. You can. You can, by all means, do this also differently, too. Um, but I'm going to just do this step by step because I feel like some people might, uh, that might connect better. So uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to uh, plug in the values I know. So this is 1.5 seconds is equal to 2 pi times the square root then of the mass, which was 90 kilograms all over K. Solve this thing for K. First thing is divide out the 2 pi from both sides. So it's going to be 1.5 divided by parenthesis 2 times, oops. Let's try that again. 1.5 uh, divided by parentheses 2 times pi. Close those parentheses. So this works out to be about 0.239-ish. Uh, That's going to be equal to now the square root of 90 over k. You know we got to solve for k. we got to get rid of the square root. you got to square both sides then. Come on. There we go. So I'm just going to leave it like that 0.239 squared is that's going to equal 90 over k. And now all i got to do is solve for k. So you're going to do a little cross multiplication trick. Just boop. And then take this and go boop. And when you do it, you got to make that noise. Boop, boop. And we're done. So here, just plug it on into the calculator. So this is going to be simply uh, 90 divided by then that answer squared. So this works out to be a force constant of approximately 1580. So 1580. And that is in newtons per meter. Those are the units for spring constant. All right, or force constant, tomato, tomato. So here is the number. All right, so we got that. So how does that help us? Well, think about now the next sentence. The next sentence says, what is the new period of oscillation when a second skydiver now who has a mass of 60 kilograms is hanging from the legs of the first? So my question to you is, are they both hanging from the same parachute? Meaning, what I just calculated here, the spring constant or the force constant, right? It's not technically a spring, it's a parachute, but it has elastic tendencies. So um, what the force constant I found here initially, that's the force constant of the parachute here. Whatever the elastic material in the parachute that's producing this oscillation, right? So if I'm using, the, if they're using the same parachute, right, for the first part of the problem, and then the second part, where they're on the same parachute, but the second skydiver, right, hangs from the first, the spring constant remains constant for this problem because it's the same spring, right? So I got a little excited there. I'm sorry if that made a loud noise. I'm not sure if you heard it, but I basically just bashed my little stylus into the uh, into the microphone. But anyway, uh, so so what can we now do? All right. So now we can we know the spring constant. And we got to find the period. So what's the formula? Again, I'm going to use this formula, again, the simple harmonic period formula. So period will be equal to the period of oscillation is equal to 2 pi multiplied by the square root of the mass that is oscillating. I could say the total mass that's oscillating, right? Divided by the spring constant. So the question is to find period. I know what K is, but do we know what M is? Well, what's the mass that's oscillating now in this second part of the problem? What's the mass? Think about it. What's the mass that's oscillating? Did you say 150? 
if you said anything, I can't hear you. So I hope, hopefully you're not talking to the, to the computer, but I, it's 150, right? Why is it not 60? Well, it's not 60 because again, when you state this formula out, the period of oscillation is equal to two pi multiplied by the square root of the mass that is oscillating. Is the second skydiver the only mass that's oscillating now? On this parachute, no. The second skydiver is attached to the first skydiver. So the total mass that's oscillating is the 90 plus the 60. Hopefully that should make sense. Divided them by the spring constant of the parachute. So that's 1580. Right? And that's it. Look, it's done. That's what that's the hardest. Well, I shouldn't say that's the hardest part of physics, but because it's not. But that's sometimes where myself included when I took the class, you kind of get tripped up because you, you're looking at this formula right here. The, the period formula, and you're thinking to yourself, t equals 2 pi times the square root of m over k. I do not, I was going to say I hate that, but hate's such a strong word. I dislike that very strongly, all right? I don't want you to look at these formulas and say to yourself, t is equal to 2 pi times the square root of m over k. Uh, 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 uh. You need richer detail, all right? That's why I try to do it a lot. I might not do it all the time, but I try to keep that in mind. When I, when I read this formula out, I'm reading the period of oscillation is equal to 2 pi multiplied by the square root of the mass that is oscillating divided by the spring constant of the spring that's producing the oscillation, right? I might not say that last part about K because I'm kind of assuming that that's the case, but, you know, the, the richer detail you can recall these formulas in, like what the T means, what the M is, what the K is the better you will be equipped to then take problems you don't know and be able to plug in the right values. All right, enough of the sermon. Let's get to the calculation. So this is 2 pi times then the square root of 90 plus 60. So that's 150 divided by then. I'm going to use the exact value for that spring constant. And voila, we get about 1.94. 1.94 seconds. Okay, 1.94 seconds. So that is the period now of a single cycle, or I should say that's the time for a single cycle, right? They could have asked me, what is the new frequency of oscillation? It wouldn't have changed my approach. I would have still found this and then had to say, well, how can I connect now period to frequency? And oh, it's just the inverse, right? So you wanna think also as you're going through these problems, you wanna think how could the question have changed? What else could they have asked me that I could have found? You know, stuff like that, being engaged and actively asking yourself questions about this, that, and through not only physics, but in, in all your studies of anything, whatever you're studying, whatever you're trying to learn, keep asking questions. All right. Keep asking why, and then ask, well, and then what happens? Okay. In certain instances. So thank you guys for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Help us out if you can. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, tell your friends, and thank you.